mean? The paper's blowing off the Rene. No harm done. Just a question of protecting it from sun and dust. How could I get along without you, Wayne? How can I ever repay you? That's all, darling. Remember, Harlow expects me at six. Oh, can't we forget about Harlow? He says it's important. Well, I have to show him some consideration, don't I, darling? After all, he is my husband. Drive a yellow convertible. Used to be my convertible. She's here, right on time. Quite a stunning woman, too. You're sure you don't want her back? I don't want her back. I'd like to have the convertible. It's a good car. That her? Yes, sir. Uh, Dad, you, uh, you two stay in the study. Keep your fingers crossed. I'll yell if I need you. It was sweet of you to invite me. Well, what have you been up to these days, Arlo? Working. Care for martini? La Juan. I've been reading about you in the newspapers lately. About me? About the uh, Carol and Grant Art Studio. One columnist in particular seems to be giving you quite a lot of free publicity. Writes for the Daily Chronicle. It's Wayne Vincent. Yes, the studio really owes a lot to Mr. Vincent. And not just from his plugs and his column, either. You might call him a silent partner. Do you employ him? In a way, yes. As you know, art critics don't make much money. So on the side, for a small fee, Mr. Vincent helps me select the right paintings for the right prices. Carolyn, I'll get to the point. No doubt you're wondering why I asked you here. Naturally. I want a divorce. Harlow, I seem to recall a certain day, almost two years ago, when you and I agreed that our temperaments just wouldn't make for a happy marriage. At that time, I suggested divorce myself. You were the one who wanted this arrangement for living separately. Well, it seems simpler that way. Besides, I, I never dreamed I'd want to marry again. Sounds like you're in love. Can you think of any reason why I shouldn't be? Yes, I can think of one reason. What's that? You're already married. That's why I'm asking you to divorce me. But, Harlow, I'm quite happy with our present arrangement. You know, I've been reading the papers, too. Your company seems to be expanding by the day. Now, why should I agree to a set alimony when, under the present arrangement, my own income expands with yours? We're not living together. Yet I pay the bills as if we were man and wife. We are man and wife. Perhaps you're lonely, darling. Perhaps you'd like me to move back with you again. Perish the thought. <laughs> the only way you can perish that thought is to pay for it. I am paying for it. And you'll continue to pay for it on the first of every month. Carolyn. When a man pays for his freedom, he'd like to enjoy that freedom. But, Harlow, the courts don't allow two parties to just agree on a divorce. Why, it's done all the time. Well, it won't be done this time. I have no intention of suing you. You'd look pretty silly in court, Harlow, darling, trying to tell the court you'd like a divorce just so you can marry somebody else. Suppose I offer you the same percentage in the future that you're getting now. But that doesn't make sense, dear. Why should I even bother with a divorce if I can't better my present arrangement? How much better do you want it? Same percentage plus 200,000 cash settlement. 200? Where would I get that? I'd have to sell half the firm. Why don't you sell your father's half? He's getting old. It's time the old buzzard retired anyhow. Why? That's the most expensive martini you ever threw away, Harlow. 
It just cost you another hundred thousand. Harlow, losing your temper won't help any. Is this the young lady who changed your mind about marriage? Yes, Louise Nelson. I'm sorry I didn't meet her before I met you. But you didn't, darling. She's cute, Harlow. I'm surprised you don't think she's worth enough to warrant offering me a reasonable settlement. I did offer you a reasonable settlement. Carolyn, if you'll accept his offer, I'll add my check to it. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> That's not a settlement, Pop. That's a tip. Suppose you had to live under the same roof with her. I might wind up killing her. Don't say that. Don't even think it. Well, you can't blame him for thinking it. Any way you look at it, that woman's a witch. And no matter how you spell it. Good morning, Miss Allen. Hi, Otto. I forgot my key again this morning. Will you let me in, please? Oh, sure thing. You don't have to worry about your key as long as I've got mine. <laughs> I guess in the future I better wear it on a chain around my neck. There you are, Miss Allen. Thank you. This morning. It's your day off. I was anxious to see what you brought back from the auction. They're on the divan. Oh, it's lovely. Who did it? Young chap just out of art school. Mr. Vincent heard about him on his last trip to San Francisco. We got it for 75. Mr. Vincent thinks we can sell it for 300. Carolyn, it's an Albert Rene. Huh? For only 500. Oh, must be worth a thousand. Listen to what art critic Wayne Vincent writes about us today. Your columnist has just learned that the Carolyn Grant studio out Beverly Hills Way will next week show a collection of Albert Rene originals, which should create quite a stir among art lovers. One painting, a seascape of realistic tone and color, is rumored to be one of Rene's best. We shall be eager to study this fine painting, which Rene has so aptly called Grey Sea at Dawn. With a review like that, you should sell it for more than a thousand. Sixteen hundred. I thought it might be Dick. I told him he could pick me up any time after nine. I'm anxious to meet him, Betty. Where's he taking you? The beach? Newport. He bought a new boat. <laughs> and you bought a yachting cap for $1.98. Does it look so cheap? Well, honey, I'm afraid you just wouldn't create any fashion news on the yacht club veranda. Dick's not taking me to any yacht club. He keeps his boat right where he works at Bailey's Boat Yard. He says it's not much of a boat. What difference does it make? If it's only a rowboat, he's still the man in your life and you should dress for him. Why don't you run upstairs and see if you can't find something? Try that outfit I was supposed to wear at the Pacific Yacht Club party. It's more your size than mine anyhow. Oh, Carolyn, you're an angel. If Dick shows up while I'm changing, will you keep him entertained for me? I'll try my best. <laughs> Take your time, dear. I'll get it. Come in. Oh, hello. Uh, I'm Dick Sawyer. Betty said I could pick her up any time after nine. Come in, make yourself comfortable. She'll be down in a few minutes. I'm Carolyn Grant. Won't you sit down? Glad to meet you, Mrs. Grant. Uh, the name's Carolyn. Can I get you something to drink? Oh, uh, nothing, thanks. Uh, Betty tells me you bought a new boat. What kind of a yacht is it? Sail or power? Well, uh, in the first place, you can hardly call it a yacht. The guy I bought it from is a fisherman. It's a 30-footer. Needs work, but the engine's in good shape. Does it have a cabin? Uh, sure. A couple of bunks, head, galley. 
fact, as soon as my rent's up, I'll start living aboard. What does your prospective wife think about living aboard a boat? Betty doesn't go for it at all. Oh, we'll spend a honeymoon cruising around the island, but after that, we'll just be using the boat on weekends. Betty wants to find a little house someplace. So marriage strands the sailor on the beach. Well, I'm not the first sailor to get himself beached. <laughs> Betty's a wonderful girl. I'm happy for you both. Let's talk about the boat some more. Uh, is there any chance you might take a lonely girl for a sail someday? Sure. Why don't you drive down the harbor with Betty sometime? With Betty? I'd feel like an intruder. There's an old, old saying, you know, two's company and three's a crowd. Uh, maybe when I'm going down to Laguna one day, I could stop by Newport for a few minutes, just to look the boat over. Oh, sure. Captain Sawyer. Wow. Say, <laughs> yeah, the way you're decked out, you should be going aboard Mr. Van Asterbilt's 90-foot yaw. <laughs> Where do you see the tub I'm taking you to? He calls it a tub and names it Betty the Second after me. I ought to give you your diamond ring back. Good. I'll turn it in on a new anchor. It is your new anchor. Looks like you're hooked, sailor. You bet he is. Thanks, Carolyn, for everything. See you tomorrow. Bye, and have fun, you two. Bye-bye. about where you'd like to have lunch. Almost any place is fine, Dave. Tell me, what did your attorney have to say? Well, nothing we don't know already. Carolyn's price for divorce is blackmail. Robbery, call it whatever you like. It's legal when a woman calls it alimony. How about you divorcing her? No grounds. The best solution so far has come from Dad. What was that? He's offered to pay Carolyn's price himself. $300,000. How could he? By following Carolyn's suggestion, selling his interest in the company. Oh, Harlow, that company's been his whole life. Well, you couldn't accept a sacrifice like that from him. I know I couldn't. Thanks, honey. I was hoping you'd say that. We'll think of something. I don't know what, but something. I'm going to see her attorney this afternoon. Morning, Beth. Hi. Well, I'll be on my way. The studio's all yours. I left a well-stocked... I left a well-stocked refrigerator and grocery cabinet. You won't even have to go out to the market. You want me to stay here? Well, of course. Have you forgotten? This is my day to scout paintings with Mr. Vincent in Laguna. Oh, no. I thought you were going next week. Must I really stay? Well, do you mean you can't? Well, I told Dick I'd drive to Newport this afternoon when I finished work. Well, I guess I'll just have to stay myself. I, I was expecting some people in to look at the Renee paintings. I just can't put a clothes sign on the door. Of course not. And if I don't get to that Laguna exhibit, I... Oh, Betty, couldn't you possibly postpone your date with Dick? I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. But after all, you did lead me to believe you could take over for me. I know. I will. I'll make it up to you. Thanks. Mind if I put in a call to Newport? Of course not. Don't be silly. And tell Dick I'm very sorry for the misunderstanding. Oh, I'm late. I was supposed to pick up Mr. Vincent at 9. If he calls, tell him I'm on the way over. And thanks a million. Well, that's sure tough, hon, but what can we do about it? You gotta work, you gotta work. What do you mean, take some other gal out? Oh, I might take the boat out for a few hours, maybe fish a little. But if I go, I'll go along. What's that? 
Sure. Sure, I love you. Bye, hon. Thanks for the use of the phone. Don't mention it. Hi, Mr. Vincent. Morning, Betty. Isn't your boss on the job yet? Why, she, she left here at least a half hour ago. Left for where? For your place. She thought you'd be waiting for her. Well, there seems to be a bit of a mix-up. Do you mind telling me why she thought I'd be waiting for her? Well, for the Lagoon exhibit. But that's next week. That's what I thought myself. Oh, I hope you're right. Are you sure? Of course. As a matter of fact, I should be flying to San Francisco. If something unexpected hadn't turned up, I'd be on the plane right now. Must have slipped Carolyn's mind. Guess she got mixed up on her dates. Oh, I think she'll realize that when she finds I'm not there. If she left half an hour ago, she should be back in a few minutes. Will you wait for her, Mr. Vincent? She's expecting some people in to see the new paintings. I'll wait. Thanks a lot. Bye, Mr. Vincent. Just tell Carolyn I went to Newport after all. She'll understand. Dick, he's on his boat. Betty the second. Dick, someone to see you. Thank you. Oh, hello there. Hi, Skipper. Mind if I inspect your ship? I'd see you, Mrs. Grant. Uh, the name's Carolyn, unless you're mad at me. Oh, why should I be mad? Because I made Betty work today. Well, work's work. I was passing on my way to Laguna. Thought maybe you'd show me your new boat. Sure thing. You uh, might find it kind of messy. I wasn't expecting visitors. All looks very neat to me. You'd like me to show you around? Do you mind? Not at all. The uh, engine's a Grayson Marine Master. I'd much rather have one of those new baby diesels, but beggars can't be choosers. A lot of special equipment came with it. Automatic pilot, ship to shore foam, even a new pump in the live bait tank. Oh, what are those long poles? Outriggers. They keep your lines from fouling when you troll. Troll? I guess I'm pretty stupid, Dick. I don't know what that means, either. Well, you run your fish lines out over the end of the poles, and swing the poles out to each side of the boat, and then uh, throttle down to slow speed, keep chugging along, you catch a fish. I hear there's a big run of albacore outside the harbor right now. I'm going out and see if I can't catch a few. Oh, I'm sorry that I'm keeping you from fishing. Oh, I'm in no hurry. Anybody going with you? Well, uh, Betty was. Until I was mean enough to make her work. Would I be even meaner if I replaced Betty on this fishing jaunt? How long do you expect to be out? Oh, a few hours, I guess. Mind if I go along? Well, uh, not if you don't mind getting salt spray all over your clothes. There's quite a chop in the channel today. I don't mind, not if you'll teach me how to catch albacore. When do we start? It's as easy as this. thinking, Dick. What's that? That I'm guilty of a complete breach of yachting etiquette. Why didn't I bring a bottle of champagne? It's customary, isn't it, with a new yacht? Well, uh, for a new yacht, maybe, but for a tub like this, you just bring along a can of beer. I didn't even bring that. How are we going to toast the new boat? Well, if you want to toast, there's a bottle of bourbon in my first aid locker. I keep it there in case of snake bites. <laughs> Help yourself. You also find ice and glasses. Just scout around below. Be right back, Captain.
Find everything you need down there? Everything but the ice. Oh, it's in the locker under the galley sink. I'll get it for you. Oh, is it safe for you to leave without anybody steering the boat? Somebody is steering the boat. Iron Mike. Now, don't look so puzzled. Iron Mike's an automatic pilot. Can hold a course as well as any helmsman. It's amazing. How far can this mechanical captain take it? Well, we either uh, hit something or run out of gas. How do you like the boat so far? I like everything about it, Dick. I especially like Iron Mike. catch Dick before he went fishing. When did he leave? They left an hour ago, Dick and the lady. Did they say when they'd be back? No, they didn't say. Thanks, Virginia. Lady. About how long do you think you'll be? Only a couple of minutes. We're picking someone up. Can I just leave it here? I'll be fine, miss. I'll bring him right out, Louise. Be sensible, boy. You can't solve your problem with that stuff. Then how can I solve my problem? You tell me. Yes, sir. What'll it be? Oh, thank you. We're leaving. I hate to have Louise see you like this, but you've kept her waiting long enough. You said it, Dad. I have kept her waiting long enough. Oh, let's face it. Carolyn isn't going to give me a divorce. We all know it. Can I ask a girl like Louise to wait forever? You know I can't. The sooner she gets out of my life, the better. For her, I mean. Did you see Carolyn's attorney? Why do you think I'm sitting on this bar stool? Was Carolyn there, too? Out of town. Maybe it's a good thing she wasn't there. I might have kicked her teeth in. What did her attorney say? Same thing. Divorce on Carolyn's terms or no divorce at all. First thing in the morning, I'm going to hire private detectives to watch her day and night. We'll get something on that woman, even if we have to frame it ourselves. I'll finish your drink and let's go. I'm not going. Why not? I'm going to sit right here and drink myself blotto. Where's your car? The parking lot. No one will steal it. I locked it. I'm not afraid of anyone stealing it. I'm worried about you driving it. Give me your keys. Dad, I know what I'm doing. Do you? I wonder. Sandy, fill it up, will you? Wonderful. Glad you enjoyed it.
too bad we have to say good night. But at least we don't have to say goodbye. Don't we? There's a dinner dance at the Yacht Club next Saturday night. It's formal. You'll have to wear a tuxedo. But it'll be a grand time, Dick, just for the two of us. You will take me, won't you? How can I? Why not? Well, because. The first reason, I think you forgot something. You're married. Harlow? <laughs> Don't be silly, darling. I can forget Harlow. But I can't forget Betty. That's reason number two. Is there a third reason? I don't own a tuxedo. When a guy like me buys a boat, there just isn't any money left for one of those yacht club waiters. Sir. I'll buy you one. There's a men's tailor right in my court. Are you kidding? You think I'd let a woman buy me a suit of clothes? Why not, if she has the money and if it pleases her to buy you a present? It wouldn't please me, and I don't think it'd please Betty either. What does she have to know? Carolyn, let's get something straight. I gave a ring to a gal named Betty Allen. I gave it to her for keeps. Well, I'm afraid she'll give it right back to you, darling, when she finds you invited me on the little rendezvous on your boat today. Now, wait a minute, Carolyn. Let's get something else straight. I didn't invite you on that boat today. You invited yourself. That's not what I'd tell Betty. Oh? What would you tell her? Oh, I'm sure I could invent quite a shocking incident if I had to, darling. You mean you'd tell her a batch of lies? Well, only if you forced me to. Only if we don't have our date. I don't seem to get this. Are you trying to blackmail me? Oh, that's a nasty word, darling. I must ask you to apologize, and then you can kiss me goodnight. Oh, Dick. Betty said to give you this whenever you and Mrs. Grant got back. But why, Virginia? She knew I was going fishing. She waited till after sundown. Maybe she thought you and Mrs. Grant were gone a little too long for just fishing. See you in the morning, Dick. Just a ring. No message. If you want a woman's opinion, the ring is message enough. Now I'm really in a jam. Look, Carolyn, will you help me straighten this thing out with Betty? Of course I will. If. If what? If you don't forget about our date Saturday night, will you pick me up about 7? You must be kidding. How can I fix things up with Betty if I take you out? What's Betty going to do on Saturday? Oh, I'll see that she has to work at the studio all weekend. Kiss me goodnight. Carolyn. You know, I spent six years in a merchant marine. And I ran into an awful lot of no good women in just about every part of the world. But I never once ran into one like you. Where were you? I don't suppose Betty came back here, did she? Yes, she was here earlier. She seemed quite upset. What happened between you two? What did she tell you? Oh, nothing, but it was obvious that something had happened. She dropped by to pick up a few personal things. Said she wouldn't be back. That she was quitting her job. Wayne, if I can reach her, I'd like to talk to her privately. Why don't you run along? It's late. I'll call you tomorrow. She said earlier this morning that there'd been a bit of a mix-up about the art exhibit. Did you really drive all the way to Laguna, or where did you go? Wayne, I am well over 21, and you don't happen to be my husband. I see no reason why you should demand to know where I went. Well, I wasn't demanding. I, I was just wondering. And speaking of where I was, where were you? I thought you had to fly to San Francisco today for the paper.
Carolyn, I've got some bad news for us. I won't be flying anywhere for the newspaper again. They found out about us. About us? What do you mean? About my using the column to foster a private enterprise. Very serious offense in the newspaper business. They dismissed me without notice. Oh, don't worry about that, dear. With your talent, you can easily get a column into some other paper. And then we can just go on as before. Why don't you try the Star Dispatch? They sell more papers anyhow. And if they sell more papers, we sell more paintings. No, you don't understand. I won't be able to write a column for any newspaper in the country, or any other type of publication for that matter. You mean you've been blacklisted? I'm afraid so. This really is serious. Without the help of your column, my sales are bound to drop. But I can still help you buy. Well, how much buying can I do if my sales drop off to nothing? We'll retrench, Carolyn. After all, we have one thing to be thankful for. We still have each other. But you have no job. What do you expect me to do, support you from now on? No, of course not. I can find some other work in another line, something not in the art field. Well, what else do you know except in the art field? What good are you to me if you work in some gas station? If I need my car washed, I can stop down at the corner. Good night, Wayne. I don't believe it. I lose my job, my career, my future in the art business, all for you, and now you throw me out. You never cared for me at all, did you? Let's not be silly, Wayne. If it's love I wanted, I'm still young enough. I don't have to settle for a man your age. Oh, don't be an old fool! I'm sorry. Come in. Could I speak to you alone, Mrs. Grant? Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Vincent was just leaving. Will you please be brief? It's late. Yes, I know it's late, but well, I saw your lights, and it's most important that I talk to you. I'm sure you can guess why I'm here. To try and make you see that your present attitude isn't helping anyone, Mrs. Grant. Not even yourself. I'm quite able to look after myself, thank you. Must you take care of yourself at the expense of three lives? Your life? Harlow's? And who's the third person? Your own. You're young and attractive. You have talent. Harlow's willing to make any kind of a reasonable settlement. I'm sure that with all that and your I own... I can freedom... take care of my own future in my own way. Good night. You'll regret this, Mrs. Grant. Am I to take that as a threat? Take it any way you like. Is it? Dick, I've got to talk to you. It's too late. There's nothing to talk about. There's everything to talk about. Now look, honey. It's no use, Dick. We're finished. Ah. So you're not even going to give me a chance to explain. What's there to explain? Everything. In the first place, that woman's not worth you and I breaking up over. Apparently, you thought she was. Oh, please, Betty. That's not true. Isn't it? Listen, honey, I was going to take the boat out anyway today. When Carolyn invited herself along, I didn't have any... She didn't invite herself. You invited her. Well, where'd you get that idea? Carolyn, she called me not two minutes ago. And told you I invited her on the boat. She also told me you invited her for a weekend at the island. Of course, invited might not be the right word. Honey, that woman's an out-and-out -out liar. I didn't invite her any place. Do you expect me to believe that? Sure I do. Are you going to take her word against the word of the man you're engaged to marry? The man I was engaged to marry. Just leave, Dick, and please don't ever come back. Maybe there's still a chance for you to lure Carolyn on your boat again. And no doubt you can. I know Carolyn. Yeah, but apparently you don't know me. 
If I ever get her on that boat again, it's gonna be for one purpose only. To shove her overboard right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I can sympathize with you, Mr. Grant, but I can't give you another drink. Look, it's after two in the morning. I've got to close up. Okay, okay. Shall I call a cab, sir? I'm gonna walk. If I'm able. You won't try to drive, will you, sir? I can't drive. Where did I get plastered tonight? I can't say as I blame you, Mr. Grant. That wife of yours is half the loss you say she is. It's enough to make a man want to... You're absolutely right. With a dull knife. Don't do it, Mr. Grant. No woman is worth a man going to the gas chamber for. I'm not so sure about that. This one might be worth it. Good night, Simon. Oh, don't. Don't. Oh, don't do it! Get an ambulance. Yes, it's an emergency. You want any more pictures, Lieutenant? I'll have to go out to the car and get some flash bulbs. That's all right, we're covered. That'll be it, boys. Hello, 
this is Lieutenant Colton put me through to Captain Hostetter homicide. Teddy, here's the score. Full names, Carolyn Ellenson Grant, age 29, married, but she hadn't been living with her husband for two years. They didn't get along together. Sure, I'll talk to the husband. Name's Harlow Grant, connected with some local chemical company. I got his home address from the man who found the body, Otto Peterson. He's the janitor here. A uh, caretaker, sir. Oh, caretaker. Anyhow, he also gave me the address of a young woman named Betty Allen. Seems she worked for Mrs. Grant in the art business, but they had a disagreement. And Betty Allen quit her job. Sure, I'll talk to her. I sent Wells to pick them both up, the husband and the Allen girl. Just coming in. I'll call you back. Miss Allen? Mr. Grant? This is Lieutenant Colton. The sergeant says that she was murdered. But you don't think it was a burglar? A burglar doesn't leave a handbag with $500 in it. To say nothing of the jewelry on the dresser upstairs and all this art down here. Then who do you suspect? We were hoping that you could help us. I don't think I can. What about you, Miss Allen? I'm afraid I can't help either. When did you last see Carolyn Grant? Well, it, uh, about a week ago. She stopped by my house for cocktails. And you, Miss Allen? Yesterday morning. The caretaker says that you came around here and quit your job last night. I did come here in the early evening, but I didn't see Carolyn. She'd gone to Laguna and she wasn't home yet. So I left. As I was leaving, I saw it at the caretaker, and I told him I was quitting. Why were you quitting? To get married. Are you sure about that, Miss Allen? The caretaker said you were upset. You and Mrs. Grant didn't quarrel, did you? No, of course not. We were always the best of friends. Miss Allen, how long have you been engaged? About almost five months now. Don't you have an engagement ring? I do, but it's... It's at the jeweler's now. I lost a small stone. I haven't told Dick about it yet. Mm-hmm. Mr. Grant. Your wife died shortly after 3 a.m. Her watch stopped. It broke when she fell down the stairs. Well, I thought you... You mean she was killed by a fall? She was killed by a gun. And we're going to have to ask both you and Miss Allen to prove where you were at 3 a.m. In other words, I have to produce a witness for that hour? Exactly. Where were you, Miss Allen? At my apartment. Alone, Allen? At my apartment. Alone? No. Dick was with me. Till om almost four, and, and then he drove back to Newport. He lives in Newport. Yes, he lives on his boat at Bailey's Boatyard. If we should have to talk to him, Miss Allen, I promise not to disclose the secret of your missing engagement ring. So you can entrust us with his full name. What is it? Dick Sawyer. Richard Sawyer. I'm Wayne Vincent. I, I've been a friend of Mrs. Grant's for quite some time. This is quite a shock. I stopped by to see if she'd have breakfast with me, and I saw the police cars outside. The caretaker told me what had happened. When was the last time you saw Mrs. Grant? Last night. Where? Right here in this room. What time, Mr. Vincent? Well, it was past 12, because I didn't get home until after 1. Did Mrs. Grant seem nervous, worried, upset about anything? Yes, she seemed quite upset. Upset about what? Well, I, I don't know, unless... Unless? A young woman came calling on Mrs. Grant just as I was leaving. Do you know who she was? Yes. Carolyn pointed her out to me one night in a cafe. Her name is Louise Nelson. She told me that Harlow Grant and Louise were keeping company. And where can we find Louise Nelson? 914 Longwood Avenue. All right, Sergeant. Thank you. 
Lieutenant's upstairs. We'll talk to you in a few minutes, Miss Nelson. Find anything? I wish I could. Did you find that Nelson girl? Yeah, she's downstairs. And guess why she came calling on Carol and Grant last night? It seems that Louise Nelson and Harlow Grant have been wanting to get married. But Mrs. Grant wouldn't go for the divorce. Except on her terms. What terms? Half of Grant's income plus $300,000 cash. He couldn't pay him? He wouldn't if he could. Let's talk to her. Miss Nelson, I understand you came here last night to ask Mrs. Grant to divorce her husband. Well, yes. What time did you leave? Well, I don't remember the exact time. It was after midnight. She put me out almost as soon as I came in. Were you angry? That woman would make anyone angry, Lieutenant. She was greedy and vicious. Miss Nelson, do you own any kind of pistol, revolver, automatic? No. Why do you ask? How about you? Own any firearms? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I have a small collection of handguns. Early dueling pieces, derringers, things like that. Anything modern? Cartridge gun? Foreign makes, early automatics. Mr. Grant, did you come here yourself last night? No. I was in a place called the King's Tavern, getting myself plastered. Did a good job of it. Meaning that you stayed till closing time? And until I woke up in my car in the parking lot, about 5 o'clock this morning. Well, Mr. Grant, I'll have to ask you to come along with me. Where? King's Tavern. It'll be all right, Louise. I can use this. Thanks a lot, Sandy. All right, Mr. Grant, my pleasure. Mr. Grant says he left after you closed up. After that, he went out to the parking lot and fell asleep in his car till 5 in the morning. Verify that? Well, I can verify he left here a little after two. It's for the parking lot. How would I know? I leave right after I lock up. How about the parking attendant? Oh, he goes home as soon as we close. Look, Lieutenant, I was in no condition to drive when I left here last night. So I went out in the car and slept it off. But nobody saw you between the hours of two and five. What kind of a mood was he in? Happy drunk, sleepy drunk, fighting drunk, what? Well, I... I guess you'd call it a bitter drunk. Seems this wife of his, this... Uh, Carolyn Grant, she wouldn't give him a divorce. Now, wait a minute. How do you know that? Well, you spent half the night bending my ear about it, Mr. Grant. <sighs> Boy, I must have been drunk. I don't remember. Do you, by any chance, remember driving over to Carolyn Grant's studio at 3 a.m.? I, I told you before, I didn't drive anywhere last night. Where did he say he was going after he left? He didn't say. All he said was... Said what? Well, <laughs> I guess he was kidding. Kidding about what? About getting rid of his wife with a dull knife. Sandy, I, I might have said it, but I didn't mean it. Well, I know that, Mr. Grant. What else did he say? Well, when I, when I told him that no woman was with the man going to the gas chamber before, he, he said, I'm not so sure. Maybe this one is worth it. Was his wife killed with a dull knife? With a gun. Let's go down and take a look at your collection, Mr. Grant. I may want to show it to a friend of mine downtown. He's quite a collector himself. Works for the police department. Bureau of Ballistics. Mm -hmm. That's fine. 
Uh, call me again. Yeah. Now, what's the report from ballistics? Carolyn Grant was killed with a 25 caliber automatic. German make, pocket Mauser. Fires a special cartridge. Very few of them in the country. Sounds sort of like a collector's item. I never owned a gun like that in my life. You could be telling the truth. How do we know? We haven't found the murder weapon yet. Do you still intend to hold me? Yes, for further questioning. You had a motive. You can't prove where you were at the time the crime was... Homicide, Hostetter. Who? Say that again. Yeah. Well, we'll be over at the DA's office in a few minutes, thanks. Well, how do you like it? Somebody out there in the ante room wants to confess to the Carolyn Grant murder. Oh, he's Nelson? No. Someone we never even thought of. His father. Why, that's ridiculous. He didn't do it. How do you know? Well, he couldn't. You're released, Mr. Grant. We can't hold you for a crime that somebody else admits to. All right, Sergeant. Come on, Grant. Wait a minute. Do you really believe that? And goodbye, Mr. Grant. Do you believe it? I doubt it. But maybe if we give Harlow Grant enough rope, he'll hang himself. Let's go to the DA's office. Harlow, there must be something we can do to help your father. Maybe there is. Do you think we can get into Carolyn's studio? I don't know why not. The place is legally yours now. I mean, do you think the police will let us in? I think so. They turned the studio upside down, but they finished about noon. I heard the police captain tell somebody it was all right to let the caretaker have his key back. We'll drive there, will you, honey? We'll ask the caretaker to let us in. Why? Well, for one reason, I want to dispose of Carolyn's personal belongings. For another, I think we ought to pack the art stuff and get it ready to move. Both of those reasons are honest enough. You ought to be good enough for the caretaker. What's your real reason for wanting to go there? Blind hope. I found you another box, Mr. Grant. Thanks, Otto. I don't think we'll need it. We've packed all the art goods, and I'll put Mrs. Grant's clothing in her luggage. Oh. Otto, who else had a key to this door? I mean, other than Mrs. Grant. Well, me, of course. And then there was Betty Allen. Uh, she worked for Mrs. Grant. But she quit her job over the weekend. Didn't she turn in her key? Not to me, she didn't. Well, does anybody else have a key? Not that I know of. Well, what about Mrs. Grant's business partner? Didn't he have a key? Oh, Mr. Vincent? No, no, Mrs. Grant always let him in. Or oh, Betty Allen. He only came around when they were here. Where can I find Betty Allen now? Where did she live, you mean? I don't know. Uh, she had an apartment on the same street with Mr. Vincent. He used to drive her home sometimes, uh, be before she bought a car. Maybe I can get her address from Mr. Vincent. Do you know where he lives? Yes, the Las Flores Apartments on the corner of Highland and Holly Terrace. Thanks, Otto. We'll call you if we need anything further. <laughs> Always glad to be of any help. You know, my blind hope gets better every minute. Honey, run up in Carolyn's room and close the door. What for, dear? Never mind, run along. a window. If you shatter a pane of glass in the dead of night, it makes a noise. Now, even if Carolyn were asleep, that noise would awaken her with a start. Now, she had an extension telephone by her bed. Why didn't she use that phone to call the police? I don't know. Why didn't she? Because when that window was broken, she was already dead. And the person who broke that window wanted the police to believe that that was the way they got in. Actually, she got in with a key. She? Betty Allen had a key. What was her motive? She said she and Carolyn parted the best of friends. She might have been lying. 
She also had an alibi. She was with her boyfriend at the time of the murder. She might have been lying about that, too. She said her boyfriend lived on his boat in Newport. No sense in wasting a drive if neither of them happened to be there. Operator, I'd like some information on a number in Newport. Bailey's Boatyard. Dick Sawyer. No, his station wagon's not here. I think he had to drive to town. Do you happen to know if a Miss Betty Allen is with him? Betty? Oh, no. She wouldn't be with Dick, not anymore. They broke up. They what? When did that happen? Carolyn and Betty Allen did have a fight. And guess why? No, no thank you, no message. Carolyn busted up Betty Allen's engagement to Dick Sawyer. I thought this Allen girl told the police that she and Carolyn got along fine. Oh, she lied. I wonder who she's covering up for, herself or her boyfriend? I'll ask Wayne Vincent where she lives. I'll go with you. No, no, honey. If Betty Allen does have a 25 automatic in her hand, I don't want you with me. I'll borrow your car. You run upstairs and finish that packing. I wish you wouldn't go alone. Can't you call the police? No, I've got a hunch I'll do better if I just walk in on her. I was wondering how I might contact you. Oh? What did you want to contact me about? Well, as you know, I was Mrs. Grant's business partner, and a few of the little paintings over at the studio happened to be my own personal property, and I'd like to get them back. You can stop by my home. I'll give you a card with my address. I've had all of Carolyn's art objects wrapped and stacked for the movers. They're going to pick them up the first thing in the morning, transfer them to my home. Here's the address. You can pick them up any time after 10. Thanks. Now, I, uh, I'd like to ask you for an address. The uh, caretaker at the art studio so that you might help me find Betty Allen. Oh, yes. She's at the Fairview Court. Uh, I, uh... Naturally, I always think a man's innocent until proven guilty, but the last news flash I heard on my radio said that you were still being held as a suspect. Yes, um, I've been released. They're now holding my father. You mean for, for what happened to Carolyn? Oh, surely they don't think... They may think he's guilty. I don't. He only confessed because he thought he might get me off the hook. Your father confessed? His confession won't mean a thing when they start asking him to back it up. You see, in the first place, my father's never shot a gun. He doesn't even know the make or caliber of the murder weapon. That the police know? Well, from the ballistics report. They'll ask him where he got the gun, what the caliber was, what he did with the gun after he shot Carolyn. Dad doesn't know enough about guns to make his confession stick for even a day. You say that uh, Betty Allen is at the Fairview? Mm-hmm. It's across the street, apartment 2C. Mm. Do you mind if I ask why you're going to see Betty Allen? You may ask. I don't have time to answer. Please see you for a moment, Miss Allen. Well, I, I was expecting somebody. All right. I, uh, I see you haven't gotten your engagement ring back from the jewelers yet. That is the story you told the police, isn't it? Just what are you trying to imply? That your ring never went to the jewelers at all. That you put it in an envelope, gave it to the girl at Bailey's boat yard, asked her to give it to Dick Sawyer when he returned from his little fishing trip with Carolyn. Are there any other lies you care to accuse me of, Mr. Grant? Lots more. You said that you had no quarrel with Carolyn. That was the biggest lie of all. You quarreled with her over this fellow Dick Sawyer. She broke up your engagement with him. That's why you quit your job. That's why you killed Carolyn. Hi, what? You've been caught in your own lies, and you know it. It's about time you started telling the truth. You did kill Carolyn, didn't you? Hey, didn't take you? your hands off her. Dick. So you're both in on the murder. Say, honey, who is this joker? What's he talking about? 
Harlow Grant. He, he's her husband. He somehow found out I lied to the police. Well, then why not start telling the truth? Well, that's what I advised her. I guess I was afraid to admit I lied. Will they prosecute me for it? Well, I don't know, honey, but being prosecuted for lying isn't nearly as bad as being prosecuted for murder. Then she admits that she was lying. But not for herself. For me, she thought I killed Carolyn. Oh, not really, Dick, but I did know you left here mad enough to do something. I tried to stop you. I talked to her on the phone from Newport a couple hours ago. We got the whole mess straightened out. And I can prove that I was back in Newport before 3 a.m. Then if neither of you killed Carolyn, who did? How do we know? Do you by chance know if any of Carolyn's friends or enemies owned a 25 automatic? Do you mean one of those little German guns? A, a Mauser? What makes you think I meant a Mauser? I guess because the only automatic pistol I ever saw happened to be a Mauser. Wayne Vincent gave one to Carolyn for a present. Then Carolyn could have been killed with her own gun. Did she give it to anyone, loan it? I don't think so. It was still there yesterday when I cleaned up the desk. She kept it in the desk? In the top middle drawer. Did you tell the police that Carolyn owned a 25 automatic? They didn't ask me if Carolyn owned a gun. They only asked if I owned one, and I don't. And if Carolyn were killed with her own gun, whoever killed her knew where that gun was kept. Now, don't start accusing Betty. Other people might have known where that gun was kept. That's quite possible. The police will be interested in two facts. Betty knew where the gun was. She has a key to the studio. I, I don't have a key. I did have, but I, I left it there when I quit. You left it with the caretaker? No, I, I left it with Wayne Vincent. He stayed at the studio yesterday while Carolyn was supposed to be in Laguna. Then Wayne Vincent had a key last night. He had your key. I guess so, unless he gave it to Carolyn or to the caretaker. Did Vincent know where Carolyn kept the gun? I suppose so. He used the desk quite often. Wayne Vincent had a key. He also had access to the gun. Can you think of any reason why he might want to kill Carolyn? Not unless she messed up his life. Like she almost messed up ours. Well, thanks for everything. Thanks a lot. realized there was anyone here. You scared me. You scared me? I thought I'd locked the door. Oh, you did lock it. But as Mrs. Grant's business partner, I have a key, too. A few of these artworks happen to be my own, and I just dropped by to pick them up. I'm not stealing anything, I assure you. Nor am I stealing these. I, uh, Mr. Grant asked me to gather up his wife's things. Well, I, uh, I hope I didn't disturb you. I'll just take a few minutes, and then I'll go. You're not disturbing me in the least. If you uh, don't mind, I'll, I'll go on with my job. Mr. Grant's calling for me in just a few minutes. Hello? 
hospital operator. Would you get me the police department, please? This might be an emergency. Hello? Hello, would you connect me with either Captain Hostetter or Lieutenant Colton? Right away, please. Hello? Hello? Yes, homicide office. Hello? Hello? Hello, operator? Operator! Mr. Grant will be here any minute. My car's outside. If we should meet him, remember, this will be in my pocket. Tell him to get into the car with us. He can drive. If we don't meet him, you can drive. Where? I'll decide the destination. Tell him you'll be right down. standing right where Carolyn stood. Do you want to see her fall down the steps like she did? Drop it. All right, Vincent. Well, look what Santa Claus brought us. Exhibit A. He took that gun out of his pocket and hid it in one of the packing cases. I was on the balcony. He didn't see me. He put the gun in one of the boxes because I was dumb enough to tell him that the boxes were being delivered to my house. Why? Because he knew that the Grant family was already in hot water. And planting the gun on the Grants would drown them. You fellas sure got here at the right time. A guardian angel must have sent you. Your guardian angel goes under the name of Captain Hostetter. He's had us tailing you ever since you were released. You follow us down to headquarters. Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Thank you. 